Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Success Series. I am your host, David Berg. This is episode number 44, alongside our co-host, Michael Konowski, and our guest today, a very good friend and the founder of Color X, Andy Bernstein. Andy is a New York native. We're in his apartment here in New York City, Midtown Manhattan. Andy, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, David. Absolutely. Excited to be here. We're excited as well. <laughs> If you could kick it off a little bit with how you founded Color X, where that idea came from, and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, so I was, after college, I actually moved out to Lake Tahoe to be a ski bum. I had no idea what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be, where I wanted to go in life. And so I followed my passion, which was skiing at the time. And um, after that kind of stint was over, I probably would have stayed, but all my roommates and friends kind of decided to move back and quote unquote start their life. So I um, came back and uh, had an opportunity to go into my family business, which was uh, baby furniture stores, and decided that that wasn't right for me. Um, I really wanted to, uh, that was in Maryland, I wanted to start something new on my own. And so I came to New York with basically no job turned down and actually an interesting opportunity uh with with these uh this retail chain of stores and um answered an ad in uh it was back there was newspaper i faxed that i really didn't want a sales job but it was the only one who responded to my right. resume and at the time the technology of um large format printing was a new technology though it's very uh, advanced now um, and they were, look, this one company was looking for salespeople and, uh, they basically paid me my minimum requirement salary with health benefits. And I took the job, uh, uh kind of right away, uh, moved to New York. Um, I kind of slept on friends couches and figured things out till I got my apartment and, um, worked at this company for a couple of years and just hustled. I made, uh, you know, as many appointments, cold calling a day as I could, was seeing, you know, hopefully five people a day, um, you know, 25 people a week hustling, um, running around town with the sample kit and um, all that. And my sales manager who hired me saw that I was young, I was in my uh, early 20s, uh, he was 10 years older than me. Um, and the company in which I was working for in that industry were... Um, they didn't really have a grasp of the future. It wasn't quite aligned with what we mm. saw as what uh, we thought the potential was. And he came to me one day and he's like, have you ever thought about going on your own? Now, I was going to go with my family company who I grew up with. So I had some exposure to actually like running a company, having employees. So I, I felt somewhat comfortable about it. Though right. um, At the time, I and I also think I was young enough and felt like I had nothing to lose, right? I felt like, why not? And so um, he continued the conversation and we thought like, let's start this. Moving to New York City at 20 something years old with no money. Yeah. I mean, the city is not a cheap place to live. You mentioned sleeping on friends' couches, but how did you, how are you crazy enough to even do that without a job? And why did you turn on the job that you initially had an offer with? Yeah. Um, it was really at the time, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. um, it was really important for me to make something on my own. And I felt at the time when I had really no, res no responsibilities like you would with a family or other obligations at the time, you know, I had no debt, I had no school loans, I had nothing like that other than what moving to Lake Tahoe taught me was to really learn and to seek to enjoy life. Mm. What that means, it means a lot. But at the time, um, this was something that intuitively resonated with me. And I realized that it was very important to, um, even at that time, un like kind of not explainably, that I wanted to earn my future not have it handed to me. Right. Um, and so that was something that even, even at the risk of utter failure, 
um, I felt that that was a superior path to any other alternate, right? Um, and looking back, I'm very appreciative of that feeling or that knowing. Um, I'd say my parents probably taught me that. Mm -hmm. my, my mom started a business um, when, uh, you know, she already had kids and really it was important for her. And I saw that her creating her destiny was um, really part of her, who she was and her happiness. And that really resonated with me. So I would probably say that that kind of... Um, that drop was something that uh, I was able to, or that seed, I should say, was it something I was able to blossom in, in a bigger way? Was your was your mom successful in the business that she operated? And if and if not, or if yes, you must have seen ups and downs as a young child. So why were you still inclined to start your own business in spite of seeing that? Yeah, um, it's a great question. I, I, so she was very successful. Very successful. She was, um, and it wasn't just financially successful. She was successful because she really created connections with people. Mm. Um, she, she, um, she bought a franchise, but really developed into uh, like these really high end baby stores in the Washington DC area that okay. it was the go-to place. It was the place to be seen. It was a place to go for presence to the, like we did stuff for the white house wow. and, and like, Anyone um, who was anyone, athletes or politicians or diplomats or just they would they would want to be in her presence, not just in the store, but her. And she took care of everything. And she was really um, it was pretty remarkable how she really didn't have business pedigree. She didn't really understand. But intuitively, she just connected with people and she cared about people. She was very selfless. And um those kind of qualities enabled her to be really successful in business and in life, truthfully. Um, however, so yes, like, was it successful or not? I, I would kind of reframe that and say her challenges made her stronger. Mm. And that was a really deep spiritual lesson that, that I learned from, from her going through. Um, she wasn't defined by, um, you know, like the level of, let's say, monetary success, but by how she was growing by cumulatively overcoming challenges and really still being able to be positive and, and like kind of be with people, connect to people, share with people, uh, love people. And she got that back. And that was very, um, looking back, very inspirational and very fundamental for how I, um, the seed level of, my company and especially these days like especially where as as we've grown um it's one of the fundamental cultural pieces that i want to have with every employee and every employee with every client that we have beautiful as a young child prior to seeing this or afterwards was it always inherent to you were going to be a founder or was it something that was only clear once you dove into it and did it, it it's a great question also i you know um once you work for yourself, David, it's very, very hard mm. to work for somebody else. Um, and growing up, being um, uh, seeing my stepdad, who I grew up with, worked for someone and then pivoted and, and, and helped with this, uh, this for you know, this baby furniture company. It, 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 it was though I didn't work for other people before, but in like kind of uh, you know, like ski bum kind of jobs. Right, That's not uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> The high, the I wasn't exactly entrepreneurial at that point, right. but I, I figured for my career, I, it would be hard for me to fathom um, not doing this for my own, I, I, I would say, in hindsight, maybe even at the time as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then, so fast forward, let's talk a little about ColorX. I said ColorX. I don't think our audience knows ColorX. What is ColorX? Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, so well, ColorX started, we were um, kind of a print provider to retail and fashion and um, design industries. Uh, over the years, our creative offerings um, kind of morphed into, instead of just doing printing, we, uh, in, the, in the industry, into actually fabrication of uh, full window animations, interior animations, marketing. And we just started a, a new division called CX Story, which is a full 360 in-depth uh, agency, storytelling agency that is a, is a complementary new division. So we're, we really work with um, high-end, uh, again, like retailers, brands, 
um, to help develop their story, right, um, through physical and digital activations. So what are some of the noteworthy brands that you've worked with and what's the biggest deal that you've done to date within, within ColorX? Yeah, um, so uh, as some of our clients are uh, David Yerman, J. Crew, um, Hoka on running, um, Michael Kors, um, just off the top of my head. Um, and we're pretty deep with those brands um, in terms of providing a lot of support for them uh, in terms of how, again, they tell their story, either brick and mortar or now pivoting toward, towards more online. Um, it, it, the, I'm going to refer back to my biggest sale actually yeah. a while ago, which was that, um, was really interesting. And uh, I remember one of our clients was Estee Lauder, it still is, uh, and we did a big uh, fragrance job. And it was about a half a million dollars. And I remember at the time thinking like, uh, now this is maybe... 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Like not even being able to contemplate that sum of money, like, and how, um, like how someone would even spend that kind of money for on, some, on a product or you were... in promotion. Right. Like it was crazy to me. That they would spend that much, right. Crazy. Right. Right. Um, and I remember being blown away and we yeah. did it and it was successful and, and kind of, the, the thing about it is no matter what the biggest sale is or was or will be, um, I think there's an insatiable appetite to always want to increase, always want to do more. Um, if it's 1 million, you want 2 million. If it's 2 million, you want 10 million and so on and so on. And I've noticed that the numbers these days, even in the market, right? There's billion, 6 billion, like, like kind of unimaginable numbers. Like we can't even really contemplate what a billion dollars kind of is. You can look at it, you can talk about it, but to really understand the, the value and right. the money um, is something that you don't even know what five hundred thousand dollars is, and you know what it could buy. But to really like understand what the the energetic value is is sometimes hard to contemplate. Um, so I, I think for me, it's more about appreciation of what that money, even if it's one dollar or one cent, represents. That value could be equivalent to a billion dollars. That one dollar energetically could be a billion dollars, or the billion dollars could be a dollar, to, a dollar, if you or less, it, or right. nothing, right. or actually worse than nothing. Yeah, it's painful, right? It causes, yeah, that's right. So I, I've learned through uh, experience and spiritual practice that um, that's really the the value in the money um, that. Uh, I don't know. It took me a while to actually understand that. And I'm still learning that right, right away. Um, but probably the biggest lesson that I learned through whatever those numbers are or will be, um, I hope to always maintain that relationship with that value or that money, um, which is really the inherent energy in it versus the kind of the qualification, the sure. qualifying number of it, I should right. say. Right, yeah. Right, to just jump, for our audience to jump to the 1% level of it, was there a moment in your business and the success of it where you made X amount of money or you hit a metric and you had that feeling of like, wow, when I was 19, 20 years old, I never thought this was going to be possible and I've created it for myself? Yeah. So, so, you, I, so, that. Jumping, so even jumping back now, even before I even started yeah. um, ColorX, was when I was working for this other company. Okay. I, you know, I, I um, and I think we shared this once in, in a personal conversation yeah. we had. Um, you know, like the first time you made like a like a hundred grand, right. you know, and and it was back in the '90s. That was like it's a lot more than it is today. I mean, I don't know what the equivalent is, but yeah. it, was, it was a big deal back then, and something that um, that was a moment of like, wow, I didn't know I can make that kind of money so mm. quickly um and what did that feel like right what did that feel like to actually have that kind of money um and and i would have to say no matter what i made or didn't make in a year that was always uh but but that first time i think i made a hundred grand was like in a year and i saw my tax return or whatever yeah. and i was like wow it, you have this feeling of um like it's a proud moment. It's it a, was a proud moment. Yeah. It was a proud moment. It was something that um, 
I worked hard, right? So, um, and and I'm a Capricorn. That's my if I, your listeners don't know and they don't order the physical side. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it's um, I always say like the um, Capricorns when I see it, I'll believe it. Right, that's the model of a Capricorn, mm-hmm. and I've been working hard spiritually to uh, believe it, and then I'll see it. Right, right. so that, that's the transformation. That, right, um, I constantly find myself in that kind of in that battle. But at the time, uh, that felt good. <laughs> it did, that right? Felt great. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Incredible. And so, what are some things that you've learned early on in business, or even now in building the company, that you didn't know were going to be challenges that just came up in, in running a company and building a business? Yeah, um, the thing that kind of comes to mind is how challenging it is to genuinely connect with people. Um, that could be employees, that could be suppliers, that could be clients especially. And um, everyone's different, right? Everyone is uh we're all generally, we're human beings and we're looking for similar things. We're really, human beings are generally looking for fulfillment in life, right? That's well, that's really what- it's the whole, right? It's, it, it's kind I of, want to be happy, I want to be fulfilled, right? Whatever that means. And so if you can connect to that or the anxiety or the lack thereof and try to connect with people and how do I give either of myself or of my company or what have you to help you help yourself in that. Um, that's really what sales is about in, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's, there's the famous, uh, sell me this pencil, right? Right. And, and, and the story is always about, you don't say, you don't talk about the pencil and it being, Oh, this is a great pencil can write upside down. It can write in the moon and all, whatever the things are. It's about that personal connection. It's about the need, the desire, and I, you need this pencil. And that's a real personal connection. That's what is the person really want? What does the person really need? That can be in any industry or across anything else. And if you can do that, and your employees, by the way, as well, if you can do that um, in relationships, personal relationships mm-hmm. and, and, and beyond that, if you can do that in a in a in, in a successful way, I, I think, um, or in, a, in an effective way, I think that's really um, a big key to success, in, in, in on any level. Truthfully, I love that you mentioned spirituality in your practice of it before we met through the Kabbalah Center. Do you grow up in spirituality prior to that? Was it always something internal within you? Yeah. So uh, another great question. You have great questions there. Yeah. 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 Obviously. Uh, yeah. We, was that our first? The sun be here. Let's throw to you. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's very interesting. Um, I could say that uh, I was born a very spiritual person, but it was very concealed for mm. me. Um, as, a, as a little boy, I have, like, memories of thinking of a higher power, of God, though the God that I learned, the religious God that mm. I learned, when I was a kid, um, there was something lacking with that narrative, with that story. Um, though internally, I felt very connected to the, the energetically, well, let's call it, at the time, unbeknownst to me. Um, as I kind of got older, let's call it 10, especially um, I'm Jewish, so after my, my bar mitzvah, uh, I, I really lost touch with the the religious mm-hmm. aspect of Judaism, but still develop my spirituality. And I remember in college, I started reading a lot of spiritual books and um, about, I remember one book that was very instrumental for me was Many Lives, Many Masters by Dr. Dr. Brian White, yeah, yeah. which was all about the journey of a soul. And it blew me away. It changed my life. I was reading other books at the time, but it was like, wow, this is it. And this is what connected me back to um that feeling as a kid, that four or five year old mm. kid playing in my room by myself and kind of like having these conversations with God, right? Or what I, what I perceive to be. Sure. Uh, um, fast forward, I kind of lost touch and sort of uh, did my own thing. I would be, um, I believed in um, a kind of energetic thread. It might've been more scientific, mm-hmm. um, scientifically based. Yeah. Uh, um, and then I, um, through a, a friend who was a client of mine, 
uh, introduced me to the Kabbalah Center. It was around the time of Passover, and I would have a Seder. There was a separation between my, um, my religion, my spirituality, and my cultural heritage. Mm. But I felt strongly connected to all three of those things. Sure. But they were all kind of disparaged uh, entities. Right. And so uh, when I discovered the, the, the Kabbalah Center, it was that and started taking classes. And it was that synergistic moment of that feeling that I had when I was that little boy and really purely connected to that that higher power and realizing that those three entities were really just different aspects of the same thing. Sure. Um, so how does that connect to even relationships and business and all that? Um, over time, uh, a lot of people I think feel, especially business owners or even uh, people uh, who are, let's go, you know, maybe less spiritually inclined or not sure or experimenting with that. Um, I think they still, could look at those things as separate entities, mm -hmm. right? Religion, what's tied around that? Guilt, happiness, I should or I shouldn't, right? Um, uh, cultural identity is something you're born into. I'm Italian, I'm Polish, or I'm African. Um, so there's sort of like this lineage. And then spirituality could or maybe not is this other entity that kind of lives somewhere in that, in that milieu. Um, and so when you start to realize that all those things are together, it's, it's a different way how to connect to everything in your life. That's your business. That's your career. That's your family. That's your friends that are, that's your friends, your community, money, physicality, um, virtually everything starts because it's just all faceted angles of the same diamond. Right, which is your soul, which is your life. And so um, I think really studying and being spiritual allows you and gives you tools, practical tools, especially at the center, to zoom out and see the diamond in all its kind of uh, beautiful, use the analogy or the metaphor facets, but it's really about understanding that sometimes you need to be in and sometimes you need to be out and sometimes you need to be in both places at once. Sure. And I think um, it's very true with business and success as to how do you um, find in the moment connect employee connections, client connections, project connections um, right now, reaction to business mm -hmm. with, with, you know, um, a sense of, you know, urgency and then also look at the big picture right. at the same time. Right. Right. And it's very crucial to uh, probably any successful business leader has to have, why is the CEO paid what they're paid is because they have, I believe, an ability to be able to do those things, um, to zoom in and zoom out also at the right times, right? Sure. When to look in the detail and when to look at the big picture. Right. How do you, how do you feel that your life would be different without the study of Kabbalah? It would be completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, so first of all, Kabbalah and the study through the Kabbalah Center and how um, Rav and Karen Berg sort of distilled this seemingly opaque before mm -hmm. them kind of um, wisdom, right, which is the, an energy, uh, into something incredibly practical. Um, it, 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 it sort of... Uh, if you didn't understand kind of what I was just talking about, about you, you sort, it's very hard to connect the dots. Right. Right. So it's, um, you could be on this kind of roller coaster ride of ups and downs mm -hmm. of successes and failures. Um, and Kabbalah allows you to really understand again, from this perspective in a very practical way, um, more than self-help, right? Because like a Tony Robbins or someone else can allow you probably to do that, to say like, oh, I want to be motivated. I want to fight through the challenges. Um, I, I would say Kabbalah provides you more opportunity to look at more perspectives and more comprehensive, not just business, but really full 360 view of who you are and your soul's journey and why 
I'm in the career I'm in, or you're in the career you're in, or why we're sitting here right now, and um, why I'm married to the woman I'm married to, and, and, and so on and so on, the kids that I have and the friends that I have. And to start to kind of understand that really unlimitedly connects you to your unlimited potential. And that's super powerful. Um, and nothing I've ever come across uh, uh, in the past or since uh, I even discovered uh, the center and the study of Kabbalah has even touched remotely that concept of this concept of unlimited, right? Unlimited potential. It's, it's really pretty remarkable. Um, and I think it's also the destiny of all of us to, to really um, be able to experience that or that. push for that and fight for that and enjoy that, that, that kind of um, back and forth. Beautiful. Jumping back to your business, what are your immediate plans, right? You've been in, at this company growing it for the last, what, 27 years? Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we started in 96, so 28 20, years. 28 years now. Yeah, thanks. So coming, coming close to the 30th anniversary. Yeah. D is this something that you want, that you see your kids taking over one day? Is this something that you want to sell? Where, where is your mind at with, with expansion and, and growth beyond this? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, you know, um, I'm open, right? So I'm open to all of those possibilities. Okay. Uh, the until I'm clear on exactly what either my exit is or yeah. my my strategy is, I'm really enjoying, and I really want to continually, increasingly enjoy everything about it. Um, and we've expanded. We've expanded uh, in terms of our headcount, our offerings, our sales. Um, and like I mentioned earlier in the podcast about we're, we're, we're developing new divisions, we're, we're really pushing internationally. Um, and so I have major growth plans in not even just the track of my individual area, but complementary tracks. Sure. And so um, I expect and plan that this track continues and um will reveal exactly what i need to do when i need to do it and i really have complete certainty in that uh that timing that it will be perfect I love that. and that's something that i that 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 kind of certainty is a muscle that really i've been working very hard at the developing over time like just like in the gym to kind of push and push and push it's not about finding the answers it's about knowing that the answers are there no matter what the challenge is no matter what the situation is no matter what the opportunity is or what the kind of roadblock is in that moment is to know that there's always a solution that is in the universe that's meant specifically for you and i try to infuse that into all my um, employees that exact culture and that exact mentality because then they all have that they all imbue that they all grow as people they all can become the better version of themselves that they all want to be anyway whether That's... they're aware of that or not and then my company becomes better right right everybody it's, wins it's a simple formula yeah. but like you have to you have to flex that Flex the muscles awesome. to make it work. That's right. Was there a moment in throughout the 28 year history where Color X was going to be obsolete? The company was going to fall apart. And if so, how did you get out of it? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's an interesting question as well because I, I've said this to a few people. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's, but it, I actually like it because okay. it keeps me hungry. So okay. what I'm about to tell you sounds kind of crazy. Yeah. But I I really think. Um, uh, in a crazy way, I, 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 I like, I hope to keep it. And it feels like I could be immensely, unimaginably successful tomorrow, or I could be out of business tomorrow. Huh. Like, it's that duality that kind of, and that kind of, uh, let's say, call it pressure differential, that helps motivate me to wake up in the morning and try my hardest. Um, I still feel that way today. Really? After 28 years in the business? After 28 years in the business, it still feels like I still apart. feel like anything is possible. Anything. And don't take anything that you have for granted. Don't, less, don't rest on your laurels. Don't sit on your hands. Keep going. Keep pushing. Keep 
trying to develop because that is like water flowing in a river. Stagnant water becomes stagnant, becomes rancid. Um, flow is life. Flow, it's life for us physically, and it's also life for a business. Any business yeah. needs flow, new clients, new growth. And um, part of that, to create that, that kind of, that pressure differential is, uh, it, it's a way to build desire, is a way to not get complacent. And so I like that, though I didn't appreciate it. it actually, earlier in my career, earlier in my business, it sometimes was paralyzing fear right. that motivated me. Um, but now there's a comfort, strangely enough, with the discomfort. Incredible answer, not the one that I was expecting to hear, but I think very powerful for our audience. In having kids of your own and looking at the younger generation, um, what first, what are, your, what are your hopes for your own children as far as their, what they do professionally and, and so on? And then what would your advice be to any 18 to 20 year old looking to just hustle and wanting to make money, has the same desire that you and I had, that I have, that you had in your 20s or still have? Um, yeah, so two, twofold the question, but one, what's your hope for your kids? And then two, what would your advice be to any 20 year old? So uh, another great question. Uh, you know, the, um, the beauty in like, that that answer i think is to and i think any parent um i have three beautiful daughters um and and one of them to start as a freshman in college and i have two younger ones but what i try to impart to all three of them is what i've learned uh and what i learned either through um experience through false starts failure uh and success and that is it's okay and beautiful to be you. We are imperfect and perfect at the same time, mm. right? We are human beings. We all have a journey in our life, our soul's journey or a physical journey. Um, and so there's, there's that. Uh, and I would love them to understand that took me a while to realize, to reveal at an earlier age. However, there's no uh, substitute for hard work. There's no substitute for hustling. There's no substitute for continually pushing. And uh, again, we use the metaphor of like, you know, the, the muscle or the gym. Life is like a spiritual gym. And to understand that, um, at an earlier age just gives you the opportunity to um, get through things in a, I won't say easier, but maybe a more productive way. Sure. And a more fulfilling way. Um, and so I hope to impart that on my kids. In terms of success in life, um, like I said before, money isn't the barometer money is an indicator it means something it's not that people should be poor or they should be rich um but they should feel like the wealthiest person on the planet despite what their bank account says right so if their bank account aligns with that that's great but not necessarily you know i think of um yeah, it's it's the World Series time, so look, let's, let's go Yankees. Yankees, let's go Yankees. A lot of Dodgers fans oh, opening. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Jeff. Um, so, uh, but um, you know, uh, Lou Gehrig was famous, uh, obviously, lived before all of our times. You know, when he had his famous speech and said, "I feel like I'm the luckiest man on on the face of the earth," and he was literally dying of of a fatal disease. Well, Lou Gehrig's disease. Right, Lou Gehrig, and the disease was named after him, right, ALS. And that pretty, that pretty much summarizes no matter what, you are great. And if we all could have that as people in business, as my kids hopefully could have that, as you or I could have that, or anyone listening to this could have that, um, that's basically one of the most powerful things to connect to that you could possibly have because if you know everything is good no matter what it virtually guarantees that you're on the path to fulfillment and success
no matter what. Love that. Love that. One last thing I'd like you to leave our audience with everybody, different demographics, different cities. What's one universal thing that you've learned either in business, the practice of spirituality, that if you were going to say one thing to somebody, it would be that. Yeah, I, I'm going to quote a Beatles lyric, right? Okay. Uh, that always resonated with me. Um, it, it, it's, uh, and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make, right? So what does it mean practically? Um, give of yourself, give of your time, give of your money, give to your employees, listen, really genuinely care about people and what people want, what people need. Mm. You have to make a business decision. You have to frame it in, in, a, in a proper, you know, way. Um, but if you can really try to make those connections with people, it will inevitably invite the energy of the universe, which is the energy of growth, of care, into your life and into your business and into your employees and into your clients. And inevitably, I think it will guarantee success for you and for everyone around you. Beautiful. Andy, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome, man. It was an absolute pleasure. Should we have a cheers? Yes. yes. Cheers. Cheers to success. Absolutely. absolutely. Thank you, Sharif, for this, Anarisa. Thank you, Sharif. See you guys See next you. week. Okay, cool. Peace.